Hello, welcome to another edition of Cracking the Cryptic. Okay, today we're going to take a look at the super theme dish and see how we can go with that. You can see it on the screen here. Uh, I'm going to work through this relatively slowly today. Um, I know some of you who watch the channel, um, you know, you're new to the more advanced types of um, Sudoku. Um, so I'm going to step through the method we recommend and some of the things we can deduce on our way through the solve. So the first thing um, you can see this square here has to be a 9, so we have a 9 in column 4 and a 9 in column 5. It's the only place a 9 can go now in this central box. And what we're going to be looking out for is situations in each 3x3 three three block where a number can only go in exactly two positions. So, in fact, there's a good example here. If we look at 9s, where can a 9 go in this 3x3 three three box? You can see it can't go in this position or this position due to this 9 and this 9 prevents it from being in either of these two positions. So there's only these two positions where a 9 can go. Now what we recommend is if there's only two positions where a number can go, we make little pencil marks, as you can see there. And this will help us, as we work through the puzzle, to identify bits of logic that will lead us to the solution. So you can see again in this, this upper block here, an 8 can only go in these two positions. So we, we need to notate that and mark it. Um, fours can only go in these two positions. Now, if we look at where a six can go in this block, it can only go in one position. So we're actually able to, to write in a big number there. And that's the goal. Uh, and now a seven can only go in one position in this block too, and that's in this cell here. Seven here allows us to immediately, we should, whenever we get a number, we should automatically be trying to use that number again. See here we've got 2, 5 and 9 to place in this block. That allows us to do two things. Firstly, uh, write a 9 actually in, in this cell here. And then this forces a 5 into the top position, which allows us to resolve where the 2 goes by a process of elimination. Let's continue, making reasonable progress at the moment. We haven't had to do anything particularly clever yet, and that's uh, so we've probably got that to look forward to. Now let's try and use the two we've just got over here on this uh, on this cage. You can see this two here and this two are forcing twos into one of these two positions, and this is especially important. One of the powerful things about this notation, because now we've identified that in these two cells. The number 7 and the number 2 are the only numbers that can appear. We know that they must appear in one of the two cells and there's two numbers for two unknown cells. So we're able actually now to write in a 1 and a 3 into these two positions because we know that this will be 2, 7 in order and the only thing left in row 4 to find is the 1s and the 3s. By simple Sudoku rules we can write the 5 in here and that means that this is forced to be a 2. Let's see what else we can do. Now this 9 here that we, we got a couple of steps ago resolves where the 9 goes into this cage. Let's remove the 9 here and again we've got 1 and 3 left to place in these two positions and we have a 1 here so let's put the 1 in and 3. Move immediately up here to put the pencil marked 1's in. See in this bottom box, we can't quite notate a 3 yet. So although we have a 3 here and a 3 here, that would leave 3 positions where a 3 can go. That doesn't allow us to make notation. We can make, put 8s in to this cell. And anything else obvious we can see? Yes, 7s here. This cell has to be a 9, and therefore this cell has to be a 9. And you can see we're building up a number of columns here that have a, a lot of numbers in them. And at some stage, once we've finished our notation, we'll get stuck. And what we'll have to do is to start scanning the columns to try and find naked singles, by which um, 
So for example, let's just take a quick look now at column one. You can see we've got to place two, three, four, and eight in this column. So this cell here, there's a two and a three here. So this cell here has to be a four and an eight. Can't quite actually resolve which one it is, but I suspect in one of these columns we'll find there'll only be one option uh, for the number that, that, that we need. And it's a case of just finding that. Let's take a look at this one, two, six, seven, eight. No. Actually, pencil mark six is up here. Let's do that just for the sake of good order. We can use this five here on this box, combine it with this five to actually get a couple more pencil marks into those positions, and that's going to allow us to write a five into this square, which forces a five into one of these two positions down here. Now I've got two, three, four, and six to place along here. And that's quite helpful. Um, so we need to study row two at this point. You can see this square here can only now be a four because two, three, and six are all appearing in column two. So we're able to write four in here, and that's going to probably be very useful in terms of finishing the puzzle. Let's put a four, two fours in round here. So we've still got two, three, and six to be placed along along this, this row. But look, there's a three already in column eight, and there's a three in column three. So the only place a three can go actually now in row two is in this position. That's very helpful. It resolves that three and the one combination. It allows us to make a couple more pencil marks, which we should do before we forget to do it. And we now know that this cell here is a two or a six, and this cell here is a two or a six. Now, no, I can't pencil mark that with this notation because uh, although this cell is limited to only one of two possibilities. If I write a little two in here, that would suggest the two could only go in one of two places in this box. And that certainly isn't true. A two can actually go at the moment in this place, this place, and this place. So we have to resist that and just try to remember um, what, what we found. Probably the next thing I'd be looking at though is now if we look at column five, you can see we only have four, six, and seven to place down here. There's a six is preventing this six is preventing a six from being in this cell. So I'm able to write pencil mark sixes in here and pencil mark sixes as a result down here like that. You can also use these fours now to put pencil mark fours in up here, like so. And now um, we're able to make another deduction because because of the work we've done on this cell and all of the little pencil marks we've been able to make, you can see we've actually managed to isolate into these five cells four of the remaining numbers that we need to place. So we've got a nine and three and a one in this in this box already. Um, but both, well, four, five, six, and eight are going to appear in these five cells somehow. So the only numbers we haven't yet accounted for in this box are the two and the seven. Where could they go? Well, the, the important cell to study is this one. This seven here is very important because it's, it's saying there cannot be a seven in this cell. Well, so the seven's going to appear somewhere over here, but that means this cell, the only candidate for it now is a two. It's the only place the two can go in this box, and that may be useful in terms of making more progress. So now, now we can make a pencil mark over here for the twos, and we can make pencil marks. Oh, this is going to be nice. So you see the two here and the two here, and this two here means that we can place pencil mark two threes in this bottom box. And look what that's done. Now, now in column six. We only have five, seven, and eight to place. And 
Uh, we've got a one here and a one here, so we can actually pencil mark ones up here. We've done that a while ago. That resolves the position of the one over this side. Look, let's put that in. So three, four, and seven coming down here. Can't quite resolve that yet. Oh yes, now look, let's look at what we can do with this um, this two three combination. Now it's a good tip for you here because initially the focus obviously was on the column, column six, um, and trying to work out something that would flow in relation to this column. But there's actually another implication of this two and three here. And you can see it because of this seven. This seven can only now go in two positions. And now the power of this notation comes to the fore, because if we now look at rows seven and eight, you can see we've managed to isolate the positions of the sevens into these two cells in this block, and these two cells in this block, i.e. they're in the same rows. So let's think about what that means in terms of where a seven um, can go. Uh, in this box, you know, could this be, or oh, that can't, yeah, could this be a 7? Clearly not, because if this is a 7, this will be a 7, and this will be a 7, yeah? So there are no more 7s in rows 7, 8, and 9. That means there can't be a 7 here, 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 or here. So we can pencil mark 7s in to these two positions. And this is now really beautiful, because look up here, we have a 7, which is positioning the 7s in this box in columns 7 and columns 9, just as the 7s are in this box. So we now know that there are no other 7s in column 7 and column 9, in particular in this box. This cannot be a 7. If this was a 7, let's think it through, if this was a 7, this would be a 7, and this would be a 7, i.e. you would have two 7s in column 7. Not possible. So this is not a 7. If this is not a 7, this must be a 7. And that is going to finish the puzzle, I think. I'm very surprised if there's anything more complicated than that that we need to that we need to find. But let's let's just check. And uh, now this is a two, so this must be a six. Let's remove the six from up here. That's me. Pencil mark six is in over here. Um, that means um, this block here can place sixes like that. scan column 8 now. You can see we still need to place a 6 and an 8 in this column. Well, that means that the 6 has to go here. This has to be an 8. And this is going to be a 6. You can position the 8 over this side like that. Now this square here, box, that's got to be 3, 5, 6 or 7, but you can see we already have a 3 and a 6 here, so this is 5 or 7 in some, but we, we, we have managed to isolate the 7s down here by the work we did earlier. So although it's not obvious, I think this cell can only be a 5. Let's put that in and see where that takes us. So. Now, in this box here, this has to be a 5. One. It's going to be a 5. Like so. Um, that means this is a 4. And this is a 7. That means this is a 7 and this is a 1. And you can see the power of this method in terms of, I'm not actually having to think as I'm filling in um, a lot of these uh, 
uh, numbers here. It's just simply from the fact that the notation that we we did earlier allows me to confidently just fill these all in. <laughs> you know, I don't even have to double check, providing I've done it properly to start with. Um, we can just write all these in just from the, the the work we've been doing. So this is a two, this is a one. And now what are we left with? We're left with three and eight here. You can see that so that's supposed to be this way round. Um, so this is a three, this is a six, this is a seven, this is a seven, and this is a six. Um, so, nice run through there. I, I went reasonably slowly today just to um, you know, go back to basics with this method and show you, show you the power of it. And I think actually it's turned out to be quite a good puzzle to do that with. So I hope this was useful. Uh, please subscribe to the channel if you do enjoy the videos um, and leave comments. We really welcome them. So thanks for watching. See you again next time.